Today, I'm talking to John Simmons, CEO of social media and LinkedIn consultancy, Rocket Science Digital. Social media plays a major part in how we communicate both personally and in business, but is often confusing with so many social media platforms. John gave up his life in the corporate world to specialize in delivering clarity around how businesses use social to their best advantage, and he has now become one of the few true subject matter experts. I'm keen to find out how can businesses navigate the different platforms with all their different rules and algorithms to extract the best engagement with their customers and, as importantly, their prospects. John, you've been running Rocket Science Digital for around five years. What were the reasons for going it alone, might I say, and has the vision met the reality? Uh, well, I've been working in you know corporates for uh, many, many years and, and really you know, had come to discover that corporate life just wasn't my thing. Um, and I got the chance to join a startup um, with, with a couple of people I'd worked with years before, um, which was brilliant for a year. Um, and it was a tech startup, had a great time there. Um, but then it folded, the funding was was taken away. Um, so I found myself, um, you know, just about to have um, our first child um, and without a job. Um, great timing. Great timing, indeed. Um and I was trekking backwards and forwards, you know, to to the far side of London. We live about an hour outside London um, and doing, uh, you know, massive round trips to interviews for jobs that I really wasn't all that keen on. Um, and I thought, well, you know, in the meantime, while I look for, for something else that really does appeal, let's do a bit of freelance work and see how that pans out. And I got a couple of clients on board. And I thought, well, you know, I, I've been doing marketing, I've been doing digital marketing since its inception, really. And if I can't do marketing for myself, then I'm in the wrong business. So, you know, let's let's ditch the corporate thing. Let's do my own startup thing. Let's start an agency. Um, and, you know, just to add a bit of extra stress to the mix, being out of work and having a child on the way, let's start a business. And it, it went from there. And we got our first uh, sort of big client in within the first two or three months, very luckily, which helped to, you know, propel the business forward. And it kind of went from there. In terms of whether the vision met the reality, I mean, I, I kind of had an insight into things because my, my father had done a similar thing and he'd run his own business for, um, for many years. So I kind of seen that growing up, which was probably part of the, part of the, the, the impetus for going for it. But no, I mean, I think it's always a very different story, isn't it? You know, it's, it's, you anticipate it being hard work, but I don't think anybody can ever really prepare you for, for just how tough it really can be. And uh, so, yeah, you know, it's, it, it, it's fantastic in terms of the, the freedom and the flexibility and that part of it absolutely, you know, meets up to, to your expectations and what you hope for. But I think the other side of it, yeah, the, the sheer amount of effort and the sheer amount of knockbacks as well that you'll get during that process, I don't think anybody ever really prepares you for. I think, you you know, having a child, a, a newborn and also starting a business must be doubly stressful because obviously a child doesn't come with a handbook and there's lots of things that you learn along the way. And it's exactly the same with running your own business for the first time. There isn't a handbook to show you how to do it. So I can empathize with your position somewhat. It's, um, it's, it's a challenge, but it seems like the challenge is working. Rocket Science Digital focuses um, on social media marketing. And I understand the importance of using social for consumer-based businesses. But could you tell me the compelling arguments of using social channels for B2B business? Absolutely. I mean, it's a very, it's a, it's a common misconception still amongst a lot of B2B businesses that, you know, I have had people turn around to me and say, well, yeah, we don't, we don't do social. Um, you know, social first and foremost for B2B, it builds brand awareness, it builds visibility of your brand. And something that the B2B businesses are, you know, very belatedly coming to, to learn is that what works in B2C also works in, in B2B. So for the same reasons that B2C companies, you know, use, use social so much. If you want to get in front of an audience, um, particularly now that, you know, so much more of the world has gone digital than it ever was before uh, the start of this year, social is a place you need to be to build brand awareness and get your story across. It's a it's an established distribution channel for your content and, and your ideas. You know, everyone, you know, within within business is you know, I say everyone, the vast majority are on social media. So whether you're talking to CEOs, whether you're talking to CFOs, whether you're talking to buyers, whoever in that purchase cycle you're trying to talk to as a B2B business, they will be looking at social media. Um, so it gives you the opportunity to get your content out to a, a broader audience. And I think what a lot of B2B businesses struggle with is 
what should that content look like so it's not so much that you know they don't see the benefits of social it's, it's they don't really understand how to use it properly and obviously in terms of customer feedback as well you know that's a very valuable channel for b2b businesses social tends to be underused by b2b um, as a customer feedback and social listening channel so it allows you to keep in touch with your uh, with your audience with your customers it allows you to have an extra customer service channel as well for servicing um, requirements. And it also helps you to, you know, to understand what your competitors are doing because, you know, there are a lot of companies out there doing B2B social media very successfully. And there are a lot of people out there who are already talking about your, your brand, your product, your service. And if you're not part of that conversation, you have no way of, of managing it and controlling it and, uh, you know, creating the conversions that, that you want to get further down the line. So there are, you know, there are, there are many compelling reasons, and a lot of them, as I say, you know, it's something almost almost ninety percent of purchase decisions are influenced uh, by social media these days within B two B. So you know that that's massive. If you're not there, you can be sure your competitors will be. So, uh, and I'm playing devil's advocate here a little. That ninety percent of decisions that are being influenced by social media. I would say a high proportion of that was within B two C channel. No, that's that's with B two B. That's just B two B. Yeah, B two B decision makers. It's um, eighty. I can't the exact figure, but eighty odd percent of B two B purchase decisions are influenced at some point by social media. So that could be, you know, obviously you 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 should be tailoring your content to the different to the different life stages of the of the, of the buying journey. So whether that's someone discovering your brand on social media and then following up through other channels or whether it's someone who's uh, already aware of your brand or becomes aware of it through you know especially offline channels or word of mouth or whatever but then seeks out more information and obviously you know if you're looking at, at, at linkedin you know so many of those customer journeys at some point people are looking at your business on linkedin for information um so yeah you know it's a massive proportion of those decisions are influenced at some point by by social media but the content that's being delivered, so if I was to take a, a typical marketing department in B2B, they're creating content, exciting content all the time. And do you think it's relevant to put all that similar or same kind of content on social at the same time? Or is there a kind of a latency or a spread out of social over a period of time? Yeah, I mean, it definitely needs to be spread out as part of a you know well thought out content strategy. If you, you know, if you think that you put, if you take a piece of content and you put the same content out across all your channels at the same time, um, you know, people are not looking at Twitter at the same time as LinkedIn, at the same time as Facebook, at the same time as you know Instagram. Okay, Instagram is tricky for businesses, but there are some doing it well. So you know, you kind of you get that one hit, and the value of that content is kind of it's very fleeting. Whereas if you uh, put the content out across different channels in a staggered way, you're building a consistent story across your channels to people who are using those channels at the time, and you also should be tailoring that content to the channel. So you know, the the, the content that you put out on LinkedIn, for example, is going to differ somewhat from the content you're putting out, say, on Twitter now. I want to say it differs. The themes will be the same, you know, and, and, and hopefully everyone's planning out their campaign themes and they've got campaigns that are going to last for, you know, say a quarter or six months. But the content itself needs to be tailored to to the different channels. So that also needs to be part of your, your content strategy when you plan it out to make sure that what you're putting out on each of the channels serves a, a specific purpose. So for Twitter, that's more likely to be... Um, brand awareness and it's almost you know we always think of twitter as being a very good first step on the ladder because it's got such broad reach and you're going to you're going to be speaking to so many people for brand awareness um and then the, the content that you put out say on linkedin is going to again the themes will be the same but the content itself and the way that content is structured and the goals of that content are going to be you know slightly different linkedin a better place for example for you know, customer case studies, customer success stories, that sort of thing, downloadables, you know, um, white papers, ebooks, things, things that are probably a little bit further on in the purchase journey. Um, so yeah. You're listening to the shortened version of this podcast. To listen to the full version, visit your favorite podcast player and search for Web Trends Optimize or The Big Lift.